Thoughts become things. Jumbo fellow adventurers, Mike Dooley, happy Tuesday. Time for a mini, no, time for a spiritual tune-up. Um, the other day I gave a talk on heredity, behaviors, genes, and how we can rewrite our stars. And that those functions, including a repetitive behavior, so-called inherited, is more because our family um, is made up of people we chose to be with who are learning the same lessons as us. And that prompted the question about soul families and how and when do we return with soul families? What kind of clusters and groups are there? Somebody asked, what about adoptions? Really juicy, fun stuff. And when you know the truth about anything, it empowers you. It erases question marks. It gives you traction. So that's what these spiritual tune-ups are all about. To give you a better handle on truth. It is absolute. It is benign. It is empowering. And it leaves nobody behind. So let's talk about soul families. In the most technical way, beyond really my comprehension, I'm sure... In the beginning, even though time is an illusion, there was some kind of descendants, as opposed to ascending a descendants from the mind of God, uh, just God particles descending. And I'm sure it could probably be viewed in an, in an objective, almost mechanical way, where certain shards of light um, and sparkles and swooshes uh, descended in clusters. And there you would have the first soul families. But what is light anyway but love and information? That's what light is, information. It is love, love, information, truth. Same, 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 same. And so... Since we're all of God, by God, pure God, we're all of the same soul family. Yet, I know what you mean, and you are right. There are certain groups, certain collectives, certain you know, gatherings where the folks are on the same page. Sometimes I look at people and they dance really cool, you know, and you just can't stop watching them. Usually, you know, for me, it's watching a woman dance in a certain way, um, whatever it is for you. But then you see somebody else dance and you're like, what planet are they from? Where did that come from? <clears throat> I think in a crude way, you're also seeing reflections of something that you resonate with. Instantly, you know, this is family. This is you. This is your vibration. And other times it's like, like, what is that? And it's just as cool to somebody else, but not you. And those are indications of perhaps a resonance of where you're at in your vibrations, in your love, in your evolution of consciousness and those create clusters. So soul families have nothing to do with genetics uh, in the physical human body, for example. And as I shared yesterday, when I talked about um, choosing your own name and um, that, that the logistics and circumstances of time and space are all organized outside of time and space, and then we experience them here. The same is true when it comes for an adoption. Okay, Somebody who is adopted could be way more a member of your spiritual family as your adopted child, brother, or sister than somebody who was genetically born of the same family. Um, you might have many reasons to not want to be with your soul family for an incarnation two or 2000. Sometimes by not having those kind of support systems, you're forced to learn more independently on your own instead of relying on everybody to wipe your nose and, um, and treat you as if you were the baby of the family. And so not every genetically organized human family of a mom and a dad or a dad and a dad and kids adopted or otherwise are part of the same soul clan. They could be. Often they are. But there's certainly no requirement. We go best where we learn and love the most. We choose to be on stages 
where there will be the likelihood and the probabilities for our blooming and blossoming. And that doesn't mean the yellow brick road. Sometimes it might be the school of hard knocks that's going to kind of wake some sense into you quicker, faster, bigger, better than just being lulled about, you know, in the lap of luxury for 20,000 lifetimes in a row. Seth would say you often would learn far more. It's not a requirement, but you might learn. We often do learn far more in a challenging incarnation than in an easy incarnation. We can totally feel that right away, right? You know, everybody loves you. You're totally beautiful. Everything works in your life. It's like, you know, you don't know what life is like for somebody who has to dig within for answers, solutions, um, and to find an easier path than what they've landed on. So here's an interesting thing. Not only, as I shared yesterday, do groups of people, call them soul families, come together in a family under the same roof because of lessons they need to learn together or to complement one another's lessons, but sometimes communities. Sometimes your next door neighbor. I've got one I've known for decades. I love him. It's such a freaky thing. And I know that there's a past life connection. Just just such a soul brother. But it could be your next door neighbor or it might not be. It could be a whole neighborhood or most of the members of that neighborhood. It could be a city. It could be a region in a country. It could be a country. They all learn the same kind of lessons together. Right now, most Americans, I hate to generalize, but most Americans are learning X, Y, and Z. Most Europeans are learning A, B, and C, and none's better than the other. Most Chinese and or whatever are, are learning different things. Individually, they're living their lives. Collectively, they're living their lives. And oh my gosh, so much is being accomplished on every front, individual and in communities. It has been said by many profound authors in fabulous books that in the time of Atlantis, and of course I believe in Atlantis, I've talked about that in other tune-ups, in the time of Atlantis, one of the community and individual lessons by that collective, by that family, if you will, who was otherwise learning so well together and breaking through spiritual glass ceilings, if you will, aware of crystal power and camaraderie and love, they also let their lust for power and technology outstrip their spiritual maturity, which led, as many will tell you, many tales and channeled works will tell you, led to their ultimate demise. Um, I won't go into the logistics of their demise, except that it led to the sinking of the continent, which was what they brought about through confusion, putting, spirit, putting technology and the like ahead of love and growth. And so that lesson needed to be learned clearly by a majority of Atlanteans who are now getting another chance at learning the same collective lessons on planet Earth today in the guise of various nationalities that are struggling with and balancing technology, spirituality, love, joy, the pursuit of excellence, power versus force, all of those things. So your spiritual family is everywhere. Uh, sometimes they're nowhere. By design, as I laid out in the beginning of this, adoption, not adoption. The thing that is most mind-bending always in these jungles of time and space is the question of logistics. You know, how can they all, how could all these people in Scotland who are loving and so family-oriented work it out logistically so that their kin are being born there and that you can reincarnate that... Remember, the logistics that you see with your physical senses are big lies. It's like watching the logistics on the silver screen in a movie theater. It's like, oh my God, Brad Pitt got to the top of the mountain. It's the same time as me. Oh, what a coincidence. We're going to live happily ever after. Then the lights come on. <clears throat> but that whole scenario was drafted long before the film was shot. 
and it was casted and planned and directed and segues and the ending of the movie was filmed before the beginning of the movie so that when somebody watched it in the com comfort of their recliner seat in the theater it would all make sense on a timeline and the logistics just took care of themselves oh my god it was so serendipitous same as life everything is assembled outside of the the curtains of time and space. And then we wake up, bingo, in a dream, and we think we're living on this linear timeline, and everything just kind of fell together. And oh, thank God I met so-and-so when I did, and thank God I had this great idea when I did. All of that were circumstances that were hatched because you had earlier dreams, end results, sometimes fears, that forced the logistics, the manifestations, to appear on a timeline that you would then manifest and experience as you went through your waking life. It was all created elsewhere and nothing is what it seems to be. We think in, a, in the dream of light, in the dreams at night, that it's all linear. But of course, nothing is. You can just all of a sudden appear somewhere and have a built-in past that's completely fake. Same with the dream of life. So don't worry about the logistics. Don't try to pin the tail on the donkey. It is not going to work. There's so much more going on. You resonate with those who, who think and vibe like you. And that's how you will find your spiritual family. They will find you. Don't worry about logistics. You will adopt them. You will find the right dog or the right cat at the right time. You will find the right child, the right parent, the right best friend. Just by being yourself and following your heart. It's automatic. Be led by joy and all else will take care of itself. Wow, fa fellow adventurers, so awesome to be with you today. I've got more great questions posted by you down below on Facebook and Instagram. Please continue posting them. I now have to get ready, if you would excuse me, for my weekly mini manifesting workshop where I'm talking vision boards over at tut.com. Yes, we have a, an adventure. We have a infinite possibilities membership. Pay your own rate. You decide what's your price, 15, 20, 25, $30 a month. You get notes from the universe on the weekend. I did not put that link in the mail today. I put, uh, I put a podcast. We're doing podcasts. Other news, these spiritual tune-ups are now being rolled out as weekly podcasts. So if you're a podcast junkie, whether it's Google Podcast or Apple Podcast or otherwise, we've got your fix. Click the link below, swipe up on my bio, and you can start following these spiritual tune-ups weekly on a podcast. Okay, time for my spiritual tune-up. I got to start looking at my notes. I know many of you are going to see me there because you're already members. Taliho amigos. Muchas gracias. Hasta la pronto. Bye-bye. <laughs>